Hi, my name is Dr. Matthew Rinaldi and welcome back to the channel. I'm a psychiatrist and psychotherapist working in the UK and today we're going to be talking about sleep, something that's really important and affects all of us. It's so crucial for our mental and physical well-being but oftentimes it just goes wrong and we don't know what to do about it. So I'm going to unpack a bit about what sleep is, how you can improve yours and then right at the end I'll be including some advanced techniques for those of you who really just want to crack sleep for good. As always, evidence will be in the description below that's informed this episode and please do give a thumbs up and add your comments about what you found helpful for sleep over time. So without any further delay, let's jump right into it. So let's understand why sleep is so important. It helps with memory consolidation, emotional regulation and physical recovery. It's crucial for maintaining mental health and sleep is thought to be the common pathway to mental health problems so either oversleeping, undersleeping or sleeping but being regularly disturbed throughout the night. But to normalise what you might expect from good sleep, people generally sleep between about 6 and 10 hours, but there's wide variation either side of that. What's more important is the quality of your sleep. So this is being able to gradually enter um, sleep and then through the night being able to move between the shallower and deeper stages of sleep that your body is primed to experience every night. Many people struggle with sleep problems, they're incredibly common and if you're watching this video I'm really sorry that you're probably experiencing one right now. If you're experiencing specific problems like narcolepsy where you fall asleep randomly during the day, sleep apnea where you struggle to breathe at night, or any of the parasomnias and restless leg syndrome, these probably won't respond to the suggestions I make here and I'd really recommend you get professional help. So you know all of this already. But I hope you can just take away one thing from what I'm about to say about some suggestions to improve your sleep tonight. The first step is you're going to have to monitor your sleep. So either you're going to do this with a notepad and just recording generally how much you slept last night, or with a fancy app and bracelet monitor. It's crucial to know exactly how much you slept last night and how refreshed you feel in the morning so that you can monitor whether any of the following changes are actually having an effect. How much does your sleep differ from the normal ranges of sleep I've just mentioned? Next up, create a schedule. Going to sleep and waking up at the same time every day with the help of an alarm is really helpful in regulating your body's internal clock. Creating routines around your bed space too also means that you associate it with sleep and sex only. Try to stop reading, watching your phone or talking to people from your bed as it creates a lot of other associations in your mind about what your bed is for other than sleeping. If you spend many nights lying awake unable to get to sleep, start by only going to bed when you feel tired enough to sleep easily. Next up, hone in on your sleep routine. Establish a calming pre-sleep routine like reading a book, taking a warm bath or practicing relaxation exercises particularly if you get anxious around your ability to sleep and wind down your fight and flight responses from the stress of the day. You might like to listen to Weightless by Marconi Union, which is an evidence-based track that can improve your sleep tonight. Think about your bedroom. Is it the right temperature for you? Is it quiet enough? Is it pitch black? Consider investing in some blackout blinds and earplugs to make your room much more easy for you to sleep. It's actually better if your room can be slightly cool as your body drops in temperature when you fall asleep. So this again hijacks your body's natural tendency to sleep. Now we have to talk about screens. Any blue light from your phone and computer before bed will limit your ability to sleep. So phones are out of the picture. If you have to consider investing in some blue light glasses to wear for the hour before you go to bed. Now your diet is really important. Any caffeine you consume beyond 12 o'clock will keep you awake because it works in your body for about 12 hours. Alcohol might help you get to sleep but it will be a shallower sleep that you're disrupted from regularly. 
avoid heavy meals as well as the digestion can keep you awake into the night. Exercise at any point of the day will help you sleep. Even if you do it late at night, last thing before bed, your sleep will be deeper than if you hadn't exercised. Although going to sleep with a raised heart rate will mean that your sleep initiation is slightly delayed. Now hopefully by putting into plan one or two of these techniques, you'll be sleeping soundly from here on. But if not, don't fear, I've got some other techniques in store for you. So if you've tried these suggestions and are still struggling to sleep, it's time to reach out to a professional. A psychiatrist or your local doctor can ask you a more detailed sleep history, even monitor your sleep and advise on treatments. Treatments normally fall into the camps of medication or therapy. And whilst they're about as effective as each other, the medication will only work so long as you're taking it, and obviously comes with some side effects too. Therapy, namely CBT for insomnia, doesn't come with side effects and works as long as you continue to put the lessons into practice. In fact, over time it's shown that people's sleep quality continues to improve after they finish their course of CBT. Things you might expect in a course of CBT for insomnia would be lots of the suggestions we've already covered in this video. On top of that, they can break down some of the anxieties and negative thoughts you've developed around sleep that are blocking you from accessing the good night's sleep that you deserve. And they can also start you on a protocol of initially reducing your sleep so that you build up your body's natural drive to sleep, start getting a bit more in touch with your body's natural drive to sleep, and then over time gradually increasing the window that you spend in bed getting quality, refreshing sleep. So please do look for local CBT therapists in your area and ask them if they offer this programme, which is very, very, very effective. So I hope this helps. In conclusion, you know, sleep's really important for your overall well-being and well worth the investment in making small changes so that night by night you can get better sleep quality and better days as a result. If you've got anything else you'd like me to cover in this channel, please do post it in the comments below. I read all of them and sweet dreams. <laughs>